Hey guys, I'm Scythian, and today we're going over how to set up a Raspberry Pi to provide us with remote access to our deeper device when it's located in a data center or any separate network, really. We can even utilize the Deeper's DPN on any device we want outside of that network, such as our phone. I will link all the equipment I used in the description down below. Also, I apologize for the dirty hands. I do work in the trades. So first off, we have our Raspberry Pi. I use an old 1 gig Pi 4 from last year for my setup. This one I'm holding is a Pi 4 2 gig version, which will work perfect for this as they don't sell the 1 gig versions anymore. There is no need to spend extra on the higher RAM, such as the 4 or 8 gig versions. Uh, this is solely up to you though. Uh, I mean, this thing's not doing too much. It's just to access the network from time to time, so I personally wouldn't overspend. But I know some people are go big or go home and they want the best of the best. So there is an 8 gig version out there for you. You'll also want to get a nice case to reduce heat just as a precaution. I got the one with the little fans on it, just in case. So with that ready and at least a 16 gig micro SD card in hand, you'll be ready to move on to the next steps. I have a 32 gig card here. Uh, it was super cheap on Amazon for a double pack. The OS only takes up about four gigs, if I remember correctly. So 16 will do just fine. With space to spare, it's actually quite overkill, but 8 gigs and 16 were both $10 when I was comparing. Remember, that's Canadian, probably cheaper for you guys in the States. Uh, with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Our first step is to head to raspberrypi.org forward slash software and download the installer. I am going to put this link and all other links in the description down below. Uh, plug our SD card into the computer via a USB SD card reader, open Raspberry Pi Imager, and select Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit. Then select our SD card and click Write. Once it's completed, go ahead and insert the SD card into the bottom rear end of the Pi. Run through the initial setup, which is just location, Ethernet or Wi-Fi setup, and a little checkbox if you have a black border around your screen. Anyhow, run the update and reboot the device. Once we are booted up again, go ahead and open the command console and start typing the following. sudo apt update, sudo apt full upgrade, sudo apt install curl dash y, curl dash l https colon forward slash forward slash install dot pi vpn dot io space vertical slash space bash uh, the setup is pretty straightforward just pick most of the default options again linking a guide to this in the description down below it's from pi my life up I'm not affiliated with them. They just have fantastic guides for anything Pi related. So it was nice to stumble across them for this to give you guys something to look at. Uh, once our install is complete, go ahead and reboot. Then create the profiles for your phone and PC using the following commands. sudo pyvpn add and type the profile name, uh, mobile. Once created, we're going to type pyvpn-qr and the profile name. So in our case, it would be pyvpn-qr mobile. And you will scan the QR code that pops up using the phone app. Uh, I found it easier to add both to the phone. So you're going to go ahead and create your desktop one as well. And then once they're both on the phone, you can export the file email it to yourself and then on the desktop app you'll just click import tunnel and install using that zip file then you can go ahead and delete the desktop one off your phone and the mobile one off your desktop and bam you've got separate links it's good to keep them separate uh, if you have two devices connecting to one tunnel they can actually disconnect each other you want to have a separate account for each device that you put this on 
Next, we'll download XRDP, which will allow us to remote into the device. Since this is prior to being able to screen record the Pi on this desktop, this part will be back on the phone camera. Enter the following commands into our command console sudo apt update, sudo apt upgrade, sudo apt get install xrdp, sudo reboot. You'll notice I always do the update and upgrade beforehand. Uh, it's just a force of habit in case anything's upgraded while I was in the middle of setting things up. Uh, any Linux guide you check, they'll always tell you to run an update and upgrade. Just, just playing it safe. Now that XRDP is ready, you can use Windows Remote Desktop Connection and log into your Raspberry Pi. You can either use the local IP or the WireGuard IP if you have that all set up now. But note that after we are done setting up the firewall, only the WireGuard IP will work, as we will be blocking the local port. So now we're going to run the following to install our UFW firewall. sudo apt update, sudo apt upgrade, sudo apt get install UFW. Once that completes, sudo reboot. Uh, UFW is our firewall, which will protect the network we keep this deeper device connected to, since we won't be using a router to block the other ports. We will be entering the following commands. If you have any additional that you think we should use, post them in the comments below and I will review them. sudo ufw default deny incoming. sudo ufw default allow outgoing. sudo ufw allow from 10.6.0.1 forward slash 24 to any port 22. Uh, that 10.6.0.1, that is our WireGuard IP. sudo ufw allow from 10.6.0.1 forward slash 24 to any port 3389. sudo ufw allow 51820 forward slash UDP. Pseudo UFW route allow in on WG0 out on ETH0 and pseudo UFW route allow in on ETH0 out on WG0 pseudo UFW enable pseudo systemctl enable UFW this is to allow UFW to enable at startup after reboots we're also going to want to click menu at the top left of the screen, select preferences, select Raspberry Pi configuration, check the box next to wait for network. Uh, and again, reboot the device. Now this should have UFW start automatically after a reboot, but there's currently a known bug where UFW does not restart after a reboot. So until this is fixed, you're actually going to have to run sudo ufw status after each reboot. And if it says inactive still, then just do sudo ufw enable. Once they solve this reboot issue, I will add it to this video. Or if you're experienced with Linux operating systems, you can write a shell script with the command to run whenever the OS boots up. If requested enough, I will make a video on creating this script. It's just a, a little too long to be adding to this video as we're trying to make this, you know, nice and concise. With that done, we are fully up and running. Our only thing left to do is set a static public IP address if you did not add a DNS earlier in the setup. If you're doing this in a data center, you'll likely have static IP addresses provided by the center. To add the static IP, we will run the following command sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash dhcpcd dot conf. By default, you will see something like this. However, we will replace it with the following. For the static IP address, we're going to enter whatever IP and prefix is provided by the data center. For static routers, this is where you'll put the internet service provider gateway. 
If you're behind a router, this is just going to be the router's LAN address, you know, the regular 192.168.0.1, for example. For static domain name servers, these are just the DNS servers that your internet service provider are using. Uh, so they'll usually have their own for you to add. You're also going to want to add the standard 8.8.8.8 and 1.1.1.1. Control X to save, Y for yes, and enter. After that, sudo reboot, and we're done. So that's it. We're ready to control our Pi in a data center. If you set this up at home and don't know the static IP info yet, you can do that step at the data center, as well as change the IP and IP gateway within WireGuard itself by heading to forward slash etc, forward slash pyvpn, forward slash wireguard, and double click to open the setup file. So, I did notice the static IP sometimes causing network connection issues if doing it behind a router. So take note of whatever was originally in that file in case you need to revert the static IP back to default. Uh, you may not even have to do this whole static IP setup as WireGuard will have a static one set, but I was kind of doing this as a precaution in case for some reason WireGuard failed. I still wanted to be able to connect to the unit uh, through that IP. Uh, again, just a precaution, not a necessity. I also wanted to give you guys a quick run through of my rack drawer setup so you have a base idea. Uh, where to go with this. So we're going to hop over to the phone camera and I will give you guys a quick walkthrough of what I've done. So this will be my rack setup for the data center. It's a sliding drawer unit with a lock to ensure nothing is stolen. I know the data centers are secure, but this gives me some peace of mind. I have three fans in the back and three in the front to ensure cool airflow. I also cut these openings in the top and bottom for extra airflow and then respray painted to ensure no rust would form as the case is steel. Uh, while I do work in the trades, I've never used spray paint before. So my paint job isn't the best, but it gets the job done and I'm not going to have to look at this thing. It's in a data center. We have power coming through this opening and the ethernet will come through this other one. I have some grommets on order to protect that wiring. I added this tiny extension cord so that the Raspberry Pi power adapter would fit. And I plan to do much better cable management in here with all these fan wires. I'm just waiting on my Genesis to show up and then I'm good to move forward with getting this installed at the data center. Once I get there, I have this touchscreen and portable keyboard set up to add the static IP and make sure everything is functioning properly. I also have extra fans and SD cards preloaded to ensure I have everything on hand should anything need replacing. To do an SD card backup, go to your menu in the top left, click Accessories, and click SD Card Copier. Insert that USB SD card reader with the extra SD card and click Start. That's it. So hopefully this helps you guys out. If you need any additional help, feel free to reach out in the deeper Discord or Telegram. Links in the description down below. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, keep your data safe, and I'll see you in the next video.